What would you say to those students when they begin on, on their IT careers? Okay, so when you are in the university or in these institutions uh, learning about uh, software development, mm -hmm. you get a base of how to write software. At the end, these skills you are acquiring, you're gonna be free to apply it to any field at this moment. Uh, for example, you can, if you like gaming, you can go to a gaming company and apply all that programming skill to games um, or 3D environments or rendering of environments, uh, automation, for, for example, AI, accounting software, nice. um, web development. Um, there is so many different areas um, right now where you can disrupt industries applying technology. Welcome to the Atlantean uh, podcast. Uh, we're here with Mario. He was telling me about his beginnings in uh, the field of technology. Welcome, Mario. Please uh, continue telling us uh, your amazing story. Yeah, thank you, Professor, for the introduction. I'm Mario Jose Palma. Um, actually, I'm working as a senior software engineer in Microsoft. I have a bunch of years uh, of experience on the develop software development um, industry. Um, I think more than 15 years now. <laughs> um, and well, I've been working in many different companies, trying to solve different type of problems. Um, and right now, the technologies I've been focusing on is more in the artificial intelligence area and try to automate process for businesses and you know, try to make it more efficient. Good. Um you, you're talking about automation. Yes. Right, good, good, because that this is um, basically the, the future of uh, development is automation, artificial intelligence. But at your beginnings, when you started with Visual Basic, was there anything like that before? Well, no. <laughs> before, um, we had to create everything from scratch. Um, the libraries we have right now are the product of all the, the code we write few years ago, but every time you needed to do like a database connection or any connection between servers, you needed to write a lot more code. I'm sure you, you had to write more code than me in, in, your, um, in your time. Um, and now it's a lot easier because we are in the development side, we are trying to automate how to write code to be able to be more efficient to deliver this solution in a faster way to the to the customers or to these other companies and these customers at the same time and trying to use this software to um, automate all their process and help the employees on that company to get a better uh, better outcome. So, yep. So you told me that you started in high school, right? Yep. So tell us a little bit a, a little bit about that. Okay. So in high school, um, I discovered my passion on the software development. Thank you for um, seeing my uncle in the computer writing some comments in a black screen with white uh, characters, and uh, for some reason that you know catch my attention. Um, while I was in, in high school in Venezuela, you have to choose between um, two paths, a career path, like one IT path or a science path. Um, at that moment, I knew I, didn't, I, I wanted to go for the IT path, but my mom told me like, hey, no, you're gonna take science because at the end, when you get graduated on, on high school, you can choose, you have a, 
more choices of careers to take mm -hmm. uh, for the university. While if you take the IT path, you only can take um, IT related careers. So I started the science path, but I had some friends in the IT um, group. So I started asking to my friends for their notebooks um, to learn what they were learning in the programming side. I started learning about uh, Visual Basic at that moment. I just made some very basic programs uh, at the beginning, but then I started, you know, became more curious about how to connect a computer to another computer. Um, and I made a, 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 a very simple chat application. And with this chat application, I start wondering, like, okay, if I send a command to the other computer, can I execute it and control the other computer? So at that time, we had these large CPUs with the, this tray that opens and you know, closed to put the CD inside. Um, and I tried to control that. Like, oh, if I send this command, like open tray, the chat in the other side is gonna open the tray of my friend um, and work out. And when that happened, I was like, okay, now I have, let's say, uh, many tools or many uh, functionalities that I can start exploring to control <clears throat> or to connect to the other computer. So that's how all the Spark right. started. Um, and I became a software engineer. Which uh, in, in, in by trying to open computers, uh, the, the, the disk drive and stuff like that, you were mixing your programming skills with the hardware skills, right? Yeah, and also the networking skills because you were doing uh, TCP IP connections between computers, and 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 that and that tells me that when you program, and that's my experience also, is that when you program, you 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 are forced to learn more um, more um, uh, subdivisions of technology. It's not just writing code. Yeah, that, tell, that's tell me tell me. What else can you do with your programming skills? Now I know, I understand that you do an artificial intelligence, but in your path, you were able to connect to da databases, you had to learn databases, you had to learn your statistics and your math in order for, yep. for you to be in this position. Tell us about it, please. Yeah, um, so I'm gonna go back again to, to the high school because right now what I'm doing, I just figured that it's what I was doing when I was um, in high school, because after I started programming, um, like the kids today, we like to play video games. Um, these video games, you are you are you are only able to play these video games while you are in your computer. And I was trying to like, okay, how can I create a program to play the video game for me while I'm in, I'm in class? So I can be, you know, better than my friends and, you know, the top one in, in my group. Um, I started spending a lot of time, like, in my computer trying to read and understand how can I move the, mo the mouse of my computer through the program, the keyboard, and read what is, is in the screen and identify what is in the screen to move the character of that game around and play the game like it was me playing the game mm -hmm. while I was in school. So I was at that moment doing something, I'm not gonna call it AI, but I was trying to automate something. Yeah, it was some kind of automation. Yeah, to make my life easier and to make, let's say money or gold in the game and level up and be the best on the game. So that, takes me to many challenges, how, how you mentioned before, because you have to learn how the hardware pieces work with the software to be able right. to connect there. Um, also, the database part. The database part, for me in high school, was very hard. I tried many hours to understand it. It was not possible, because I, I was by myself, learning, re uh, reading right. all this material. But once um, I get out of high school and I went to the university and other 
um, institute where I learned more about programming is where I totally understand about how to connect to databases. So at the end, depending on the challenges you try to tackle is where your knowledge starts expanding because you start becoming like, okay, I know all this set, this was working to solve these other problems. Now we have other problems. I have to learn this. Um, is in technology related or maybe it's not in technology related. Um, I made some, um, you know, later, later on, I made some projects for boats and cars to read uh, data from out of sensors, analyze the data, um, trying to, to give this data or insights, uh, useful insights to the owners to do some um, actions. And when I start reading the data from these sensors, from boats or from cars, there are two different types of assets. And you have to learn about boats because you can say, yeah, I'm learning all these numbers, but I have no idea if the numbers are right or not. What right. is the range? Um, and what that means. So you have to learn not only in the software and IT aspect, but also the environment around the problem you want to solve. Right. Um, that's something that I love about my job. You, you mix in, you mix in your programming skills, your database skills, with uh, um, uh, business-related skills that you need to know in order to solve the problem. Exactly. How many certifications do you have? How many certifications? I think at this moment I have more than 15 certifications, Microsoft certifications. Uh, it's something that's not required for everybody to be successful in this world. <laughs> right, of course, yeah. But th are those certifications uh, on the same field or they're on different, different fields? Uh, are on the same field are, are Microsoft certifications, um, something that I started in 2008 uh, where I got my first certification in SQL Server. Um, and after that, I went that certification. After I got it, one month later, I got my first job. All right. And when I saw that change, or that change of um, point of view from the employer when say, hey, this guy has a certification, let's give him an opportunity. I start looking the certification like, okay, if I get more certifications, maybe I'm gonna get more job opportunities. I'm gonna be able to move around and <coughs> all that. So after that first certification, I start like, okay, I got a job. Now I'm gonna invest more in my education and trying to get more certifications, get graduated on the university. And I think that's the path that's gonna work. Right. At, um, at the end, I was very nerdy, let's say, um, being the computer almost all day long, trying to figure out things, um, um, you know, studying a but lot. And the certifications are programming related. Like you said, the first certification was SQL SQL Server, sure. which is a database related. Mm -hmm. So how, how about other? Uh, oh, okay. The other ones. Um, so first, I took the database related. Then I moved to. I learned a lot about databases there. I, I, I really like databases. Then I moved to web development, where I got certification on ASP.NET, um, the .NET framework um, of Microsoft, uh, programming in C Sharp. Um, lately, so all the certification were related to that, and lately uh, I started getting certifications related to AI or machine learning. Um, the last one I got is about uh, cybersecurity. Okay, yep. so that, that's excellent. And uh, uh, what I'm trying to relate to to the uh, to students is that in in the IT field, you start in one in one position in one profession, but you soon realize that you have to you have to be involved in almost anything related to IT, one way or the other. Yeah. I also understand that you wrote a book. Tell us about your book. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I wrote a book um, during the pandemic. Um, that was kind of my, okay, what I'm gonna do all day here, 
at home. So I, I need a challenge or something. So um, I started writing this book um, to explain to, to the people who is not 100% related on the, on, on the technology side to understand what is AI, um, what is not, and how AI can help you and help different industry to, to humanity to become better. And I wrote it because every time I tell people like, hey, I work in AI and I create these you know, artificial brains to try to automate processes, the first question I get is, are the AI conquer the war? Um, you know, AI is gonna destroy humanity or something like that. All what we watch in the movies. Right. Um, and this book <clears throat> for me was like, okay, um, I want to focus the book on the positive things that AI is doing for us at this moment and in the future. Um, and look, all the feedback I got from um, my, my readers, let's say, um, it's been very positive because they now understand like, oh, that because I have also personal um, experiences with AI where I say, hey, I, I recommend these applications or these devices that use AI to improve your health. Um, and I use it in this way. And I describe all that in the book. And they are like, wow, I didn't know that. Now, you know, I can use the, the AI technology or this type of technologies to improve my business or my health or my connection with my, my family. So, yeah. What's the name of the book? Uh, the book is AI and Us. Right. Um, right now it's in Amazon. If you look for my name uh, on Amazon, you're gonna see two versions of the book. Um, one is in English, other in Spanish. Um, feel free to go there. Um, bye. So we were talking before about what uh, many students when they start in, uh, when they start in the IT field, this mm -hmm. they they don't know what to do. They really don't don't have an idea which path to take. What would you say to those students when they begin on, on their IT careers? Okay, so when you're in the university or in these institutions uh, learning about uh, software development, <coughs> you get a base of how to write software. At the end, these skills you are acquiring, you're gonna be free to apply it to any field at this moment. Uh, for example, you can, if you like gaming, you can go to a gaming company and apply all that programming skill to games uh, or 3D environments or rendering of environments. Uh, automation, for, uh, for example, AI, accounting software, right. um, web development. Um, there is so many different areas um, right now where you can disrupt industries applying technologies. For example, the, the project I mentioned about the boats and the, the, the cars. For the boats, you know the, the tow boats, like the, the boats that push the, the right. biggest boat in, in, the, in the canals. Um, we made some software for them. Um, and for me it was like, I never before my office was in the boat. So sometimes I sit on my laptop, there in the boat, in the ocean, just programming and testing the, the sensors. And for me it was like, wow, this is a great experience that not too many developers experience because they, they don't work with boats. And then I get moved to another project with racing cars. And I was in, the, in a truck um, race with racing cars around and all that sound and everything with my laptop making configurations for to collect all this data from the racing cars and with all this data applying AI to try to um, create a better configuration file to make better time for, for each lab right. on, on that car. So 
these are type of experiences that if you follow your passion, let's say your passion is cars, maybe you can go through that path and you can be a racetrack doing what you love to do. And, uh, and by seeing that you mentioned it, but just but what you just told me, you mentioned in, uh, several fields in IT. You mentioned in programming, right? Mm -hmm. You mentioned on data, data analysis, data science, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, in the sensors I IoT devices. Yep, exactly. Wow. Very good. Yeah. yeah, and right now, um, one of my latest certification on cybersecurity, um, the reason of that was because I feel cybersecurity is gonna be, it's an issue, it's a big issue right now, but there is not many experts on, with the skills of programming plus cybersecurity. Mm -hmm where you can automate cybersecurity um, configurations or defend from attacks from other, uh, from other countries, let's say right now. So that's something that caught my attention because I would say like, if I can blend my experience on software engineer plus AI plus cybersecurity, maybe I can create an AI that can be, let's say, the goalkeeper of right. that company to block the attacks in a more automated way and more smarter way and with a um, response time much faster than a human can, can right. do. You're correct. If a student wants to create a career in, in, in IT, what is it that they need to go through? Do they need to, uh, the, uh, will you recommend them to take a associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a, ma um, a master's degree, and also certifications. Would that be a good combination? Well, I think if they can take all of that at the same time, yeah, definitely I can say, yeah, let's do it. But something that I've been learning during all this time, every person is different. Um, and not one size fit all. Something that I value in all what I experienced on my career was like, while you study more and you get more um, informed, read more, and trying to look for all this information to, to tackle these challenges you, you get in your career, you get, you're gonna get more experience over time. So for, for example, the certification for me was a very good um, path because if I compare my experience on that university that, that I had in, in uh, experience on Venezuela versus the institution that they, they gave me the opportunity to study there to get the Microsoft certifications, if I compare them, I learn more in that institution than in the university. Um, because the university wasn't focused on technology. Right. They just had a pensum that were very basic on technology, but I was compensating the technology side with the other institution. So in that side, uh, I will say, yeah, take the, the courses um, that you can do and follow your career. And after taking, you don't have to have a clear path from day one. Right. You're gonna start discovering this path while you are walking through that path. So if you start, um, let's say, in one of the pensions here in Atlantic University, and you start learning all the basics, you're gonna start discovering what is your passion and where you wanna go. So here we have the, here in Atlantis University, we have the Microsoft certifications, we have the Cisco certifications, and we have other pensions where, the pen, or, or also in cybersecurity, where if you like cybersecurity, you're gonna have the opportunity to go through that path, knowing the basics and discovering this passion, while in other universities, they don't have these auctions or this catalog of careers where you can jump 
one to another and start becoming better in your field. One of the things that I uh, discovered, you know, and by what you told me before, when you started programming when you were 15. Mm -hmm. So when you started your career in your university, you were already a programmer. And I had the same experience. Okay. When I, I decided to go to a university because I needed to complete my knowledge because as a programmer, I was able to solve issues, but I needed to know more. I mm -hmm. needed to know more about businesses, uh, the business process, for example. I uh, needed to know more about statistics. I needed mm -hmm. to know more about networks because being a programmer, you're not a network ex expert. You, so in, in yeah. because when you start developing, when you start learning more, at one point you need to know, you're learning more, you need to know more. Yep. And that's what the university is for, to complete exactly. your knowledge, right? But, it, but the university do, doesn't compare to the real life experience. And in order for you to get to that real life experience, you need to get the opportunity to get a job. Yep. And certifications open those doors for you. Yeah. So the combination of your degree, uh, 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 the professional degree in college or university plus certifications are going to open a lot of doors for you. Yeah, and I, I see it like in my mind, everything is probabilities, right? Right. So if you get more certifications, you're going to get more probabilities to get your dream job. If you get more careers done, you're gonna get more probabilities, you know, to get um, the career you want. Um, in the university, something I see or is, you know, the the movie Karate Kid. Right. So when the the karate, I don't remember the names, but when the Karate Kid kid goes to the master, the master starts saying, "Hey, you have to." Um, you know, go to the to the fence and do this movement. And after I don't know, I don't remember the name, uh, the the time, like two days, three days. The, the kid was like, and just painting all your fence and you know doing all your work, and you are not teaching me uh, how right. to to fight. Um, and I feel that's what the university does for you. It's like they're gonna teach you the basics. Maybe at that moment you don't you don't know why you're learning networking. You don't know why you're learning how hardware stuff. If you want to be a programmer, but at some point in your career everything's gonna connect. And when that happens, it's like, oh, that's why this professor teach me about this, and now I can you know solve the problem. Right. So what do you see in the future for, um, for um, uh, uh, programmers? For programmers, um, actually, the, all these big companies on software development, um, like Microsoft, Meta, Google, Amazon, they are looking for software engineers. And there are not enough software engineers to fill all these positions. And they are fighting for the resources to each other. Um, that is a good thing right now for software engineers because that fight is raising the salaries for software engineers to you change uh, between companies, but also for software engineers coming out of the university because there are many positions open, there are not too many software engineers unemployed, and they are trying to take as much as possible to, to join their team. So in the employment side, I feel there is a very good opportunity to find a job as a software engineer. In technology-wise, um, there is gonna come many changes on automation, robotics, uh, in our economics because now we are having many challenges that before wasn't. Um, and now we have to figure out new ways how to solve this problem. For example, um, right now the automated cars are almost a reality, um, the fully automated cars. Um, what if Uber 
release one of these cars um, and replace all the Uber drivers. There is going to be many unemployed people who it's going to have to shift their, their job from Uber drivers to other type of job. Um, I think will be a very good, wise advice to call these people and say, hey, you should learn something about um, IT or in the technology area to come, to be prepared for that time to come. Will I change? Yeah. Um, another big issue I see on the economic side is our life expectancy is growing. So now we, maybe my life expect expectancy now is 100 years old. Um, there is many people who is gonna, so the kids right now <coughs> are gonna get older than, than us. Um, we need to take care of the elderly. And there is not gonna be enough grandchildren to take care of them. So right now, these companies like Toyota, Honda, uh, Japanese company mostly, or Asian company mostly, um, they are investing a lot of automation and robotics to take care <coughs> of the elderly. And that's something we haven't seen before because this is gonna be a technology that the elderly is gonna take first than us, the younger generation. Right. Um, the governments um, know that's a problem that's coming um, and they're trying to invest as much as possible on robotics to um, take care of the elderly when we, you know, we don't have the grandchildren to take care of us because of that. Um, and I feel like in AI, AI is everywhere now and it's gonna grow in different industries. Right now we have AI in Netflix. Every time you turn on the, the TV and go Netflix, Netflix tell you, hey, you should watch this show. I, right. I'm sure you're gonna like it or 90% is you know, it's your match or something like that. Um, and like in Netflix, we have it in other more complex uh, industries that are helping us to become a better uh, version of ourselves, like in healthcare, um, to try to um, find the cure for cancer, for example, or um, develop other uh, type of medicine in a more efficient way. So there is many industries coming up. There is not many people to fill these positions. Um, something that we need is all these people coming out of the university go to you know work on on these industries and in these companies. But the huge change I seen lately is more women are becoming software engineers. Yeah. Um, we're empowering women on on that area and bring women or people from other um, part of the country, like Latin America, Asia, they can come and give other point of view the how to solve problems. And in many times, that's a better solution than the, the one, you know, the, the way we used to solve the problem. So I feel this is the time to become a software engineer um, to study and try to follow your passion. And I think in this career is one of the, it's one of the, the one that, that you can study software engineers, but you can follow your passion depending on where, where, where you want to go. If you want to go arts, music, boats, cars, finance, whatever, you can apply software engineer to solve the problems in any That's industry. Right. Yep. So um, uh, on, I want to thank you for being here with us. Uh, I think it was a really good time that we had here. Thank you for Great the invitation. Experience. Yeah. And thank you guys for being with us. Mm -hmm.